And good morning, everybody. Pastor Sven here from Gateway of Hope. Glad to join you this morning. Sorry that uh, we missed uh, being with you guys yesterday morning. I uh, had some things to take care of at the office that prevented me from being able to get there uh, online to join you. I also didn't have my laptop with me. Uh, but uh, here we are today. It is Thursday morning, almost Friday, and I'm excited to share the word with you. Got a few small things I want to put before you. Let's go right to the Word of God in the book of Philippians. I also remind you before you get out the door, get in the Word for yourself. I promise you it'll change your day and change your outlook. We're in Philippians chapter 3, and we are starting with verse 17. The Apostle Paul has been talking about uh, that we should all be spiritually mature uh, and that we should hold on to the things that God has done in us, that we forget the things which are behind us, but we don't let go of all the good. Then he picks up in verse 17, Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your life after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I've told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many who conduct, whose conduct shows that they're really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite, and they brag about shameful things, and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and my crown I receive for this work. Just a few uh, small things I want to share with you guys this morning. Hey, good morning, Ronnie and Roland. Good morning, Pastor Elisha. Thanks for joining us. And wherever you are today, thank you for joining us. I want to just share a few things here uh, that are really important for us to grab a hold of in our Christian life. The first thing he says is pattern your life. You know, we have to make a choice. i got to make a choice every day that I need to pattern my life. And thankfully... I don't just need to pattern my life onto something abstract, but I've had people who've poured into my life who I can look to on a continuous basis, and I can say, when I don't know how to respond and when I don't know what to do, I can look to their lives and I can see a godly example of how to respond and how to live. The Apostle Paul says, follow my example. He says, pattern your life after mine. Now, that is a bold thing to say, and it's not something that I would even say sometimes because I know myself better than every one of you, and all of you are very gracious and kind and often say so many kind things about me, but I know who I am, and I know how sometimes I am and how I sometimes behave. But the Apostle Paul says, look at my life and pattern your life after mine. And in so much as I follow the Lord Jesus Christ, in so much as I live for Him, and in so much as I walk for Him, and in so much as I point my life, make my life a reflection of Jesus, in that I say, yes, follow me and follow my example. You know, we all need godly people that we look up into our lives. And it shouldn't just be somebody that we look up to on the internet or on television. It should be somebody that we we know, somebody who where we can get close to them and where we can observe their lives and they compel us and they cause us to grow. I taught last night at Gateway about the prophetic. And we are to be a prophetic people, but the prophetic both prompts and promotes growth in the lives of those who receive it. Which means that if we are prophetic ministers, that we should be prompting and promoting growth in the lives of all with whom we come into contact. And we should pattern our lives. We should watch and we should follow the example of those who prompt growth in our lives and those who promote growth in our lives. I've been very fortunate and I've been very blessed that I've had the opportunity to be around godly leaders all my life. The real deal. I've known plenty of fakes, but I've had the pleasure of working with people who are genuine. They've prompted growth in me. They've called out the things in me that didn't belong and they promoted growth in my life. And I encourage you, if you don't have somebody like that, go find somebody like that. You need that in your life. Uh, if you're in Houston, Gateway of Hope is a great home for you. 
But I also realize that Gateway of Hope is not the, is not the soil for absolutely every plant, spiritual plant. Some of you belong in other places and make sure that where you are supposed to be, you are rooted and grounded and established and firm there and being taught the Word of God and that you have a godly leader who you can pattern your life after. He says, don't only follow me as I follow Christ, but follow others who have also followed our example. And what is that example? Paul, above all things, was a servant. Paul was a humble man. Now, that didn't mean he wasn't bold. It doesn't mean he wasn't direct and to the point. But it does mean that he was a person who served others and who put his needs and his life last. And I would encourage you, find those who will do that. Follow those who pattern their lives after servants like Paul and Silas and those of the New Testament who were willing to lay their lives down for the sake of the cause. And what is the cause? Your spiritual growth, your spiritual development. He says, he goes on to say, uh, he says, I've told you often and I say it again with tears in my eyes that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. They are God is their appetite, and they brag about shameful things and think only about this life here on earth. Uh, you know, I know that we have quoted the scripture often that says, Judge not, lest you be judged. Uh, but to say that God doesn't call us to judge the character of others around us is a total misappropriation of Scripture. As a matter of fact, the Word over and over again implores believers to, to use the gifts of discernment, to judge what is right from what is wrong, and uh, to make their decisions in their life on that. Now, to judge others for the sake of condemning them, to judge others for the sake of saying they are going to hell, that is where we should draw the line, and that is not our purvey. That belongs only to God. But we should be able to judge the fruit. God said, you will know a tree by its fruit. And the Apostle Paul says here, he says with tears in his eyes, he said, you need to understand not everyone who says that they are a leader in the kingdom is actually a leader in the kingdom. Some of them, by their lives, demonstrate that they're actually enemies of the cross, bragging about shameful thing, and their God is, the, is their appetite, lusting only after the things of this world. What is he saying here? Is not everything that looks like the real thing is the real thing. We need to be able to examine the fruit of others around us and to be able to distinguish between genuine and false. And in this way, Paul is saying that as you're trying to grow spiritually, as you are attempting to develop and to mature in your spiritual life, you need godly people around you. But you also need to have the gift of discernment to be able to tell the real from the counterfeit, those who will prompt and promote spiritual growth, and those who will stunt and stop it. And so I would encourage you to do that. The word to judge means to separate out that which is good. Now, we need to be looking for that. Now, yes, we should focus on the good in people's lives, but we also should be looking to see what does this person's character say about them? How can I judge this person? How can I judge the fruit? The word says, look at their appetite. Look at what the things that they're longing after. Because uh, where the treasure is, that's where the heart is also, is what Jesus said. If the treasure is just the stuff here on earth, if the treasure is just acclaiming and, and, and attaining all of the joys of life, then you can see where their treasure is, and that is where their heart is. But as servants of God, we realize that we will have many trials, we'll have tribulations, we will go through things, but we can have joy in the middle of all of those things. Why? Because we are not citizens here of this temporary temporal earth. We are not just here for, this is not all there is. And that's some hope to somebody who is watching here today. Because sometimes we get so encumbered with just what is happening around us that we forget 
that what's going to happen on this Thursday is not all that my life is about. And I'm not defined, as I said a couple of days ago, I'm not defined by my present circumstance. I am defined about what Jesus Christ says about me. And Jesus says that I am already seated with him in heavenly high places, that I'm already the redeemed of the Lord, that I am the apple of his eye, and I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you with that today. He says, we are not like that. We're not just people who brag about shameful things and think only about life here on earth. We are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ is. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. I think we've forgotten about that one day, very soon, our Lord will return. Now, I'm not going to sit there and preach a sermon to you on get right or get left. Uh, we don't need to try to figure out how everything will end in the end time. Hey, good morning, Michelle. We don't need to figure all of those things out. We just need to be mindful of the fact that the Lord is returning and we should be eagerly anticipating His return. As a matter of fact, today could be that day. This morning could be the last dawn before He returns in the clouds of glory. We know the Word says that He will come in the twinkling of an eye, and then we will be changed and we will be like Him, for we will see Him just as He is. We are eagerly awaiting His return as our Savior, and He will take our weak bodies. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like His own. And we saying as all of this stuff that we go through here on life, we try to go through life, and we're just trying to attain, 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 attain. Work, 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 work. And Paul is saying there's a better way, and that is denying yourself. It's serving others. And yes, you will pay a price, and yes, sometimes it will make you weak in your body. But you're citizens of heaven. Don't live here for this temporary treasure here on earth. Live for what's coming. Live for the next life. And he says, I promise you that when he comes, it will be worth it all. We used to sing a song so often in church. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. And I'm going to encourage you, my friend, today, run the race because you will see Christ and you will see him. This could be that day. And then he says, stay true because of all of these things. Just stay true to the Lord. Continue to follow him. Continue to pattern your life after those who are serving and following the Lord Jesus. And then he says, I love you and I long to see you, my dear friends. You hear you see the sign of a real leader and of a servant of God. You are my joy and my crown that I receive for my work. For those of you who serve uh, under uh, in, in ministry under me, I want you to know you are my joy. You're my crown. You're, the, you're my acclaim. You're the things that I, that I take the most pleasure in. You're the things that put a smile on my face. Those of you here in Gateway, I hope in Houston, Pastor Spencer and Pastor Elisha in India and in the Philippines and so many others that I have the privilege to be able to pour into. You're my joy. You make it all worthwhile. And you should also have somebody that you can look at and say, man, I've been pouring into this person. I see some spiritual growth. And it makes it all worthwhile. Because one day I will see him and I will behold him. And he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't need to feed all the appetite of this world here today when I can just simply serve him and he will fulfill my every need and every desire when I see him in all of his glory, face to face. My goodness, what good news that is. So come on, let's make some declarations today and let's pray over this day. Father, in the name of Jesus today, I thank you that, Lord, that you've given me, Father God, godly examples and people who pour into my life on a regular and on a consistent basis. Lord, I thank you for that. I pray that, Lord Jesus, that you would bless them, Lord. Bless, Lord Jesus, every person who has ministered into me, who has poured into me, Lord. Pour back into them, Lord, with abundance, pressed down, shaken together, running over with good measure, God. Cause other people to give back to them in the same way they've given. Lord, give me discernment today to be able to spot the real from the counterfeit. Lord Jesus, let me not be as those, Father God, who have their appetite just on this 
world and just on the things down here. Lord, you said in your word that where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So Lord Jesus, I put my eyes, I set my eyes on things above where moth and rust cannot corrupt. Lord Jesus, you said in your word, if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added to me. So Lord, I seek that today. I make that my ambition, my goal, and my aim in this day to seek the kingdom, to seek the expansion of the kingdom in my life, Lord. I thank you for that. And Father, I just pray the Lord that you would make us mindful, Lord. I Make me mindful today of your imminent return, that you will come, and that, Lord, because you are coming soon, I must be busy and must be about my Father's business. Lord, for all of those that you have blessed me with, Lord, to be able to pour into some of who are watching this very moment, Lord, I thank you for every one of them. And Lord, I know sometimes, Lord, that they may feel like they're just on the receiving end, but Father, little do they know how much they give back to me. Lord, they're my joy, they're my crown. I pray your blessing over every single one of them. Let them grow, let them be encouraged. And Father, let them sense the very real presence of Jesus right where they are in this very moment. Blessing upon all of these. Lord, today use me. I submit to you, and I simply say, Lord, I'm your hands, your feet. Lord Jesus, I am your mouth. Move and operate in my life because I'm yielded to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thanks for joining me this morning. I always enjoy it. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning about this same time right here on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, remember, our worship is not over. Our service is just beginning. Go be the people.